in this grade 10 mathematics video we are looking at euclidean geometry specifically we are going to focus on the parallelogram we have two questions the first one wants us to prove that the shape we are looking at is in fact a parallelogram that's where we look at the properties of a parallelogram and try to prove that shape and the second one is going to be a question on calculations of the angle we will be solving for x in that question let's jump straight into the first question our first question is proving a parallelogram and it's from the June 2024 question paper. The question paper will be linked in the description box below. We are in 4.1 and it says, use the diagram below to prove that the opposite sides of a parallelogram are equal. So basically what this question is asking in a sense is that we need to prove that this shape is a parallelogram. You will find that when we deal with Euclidean geometry, especially at grade 10, most of the questions just want you to show prove that that shape is that shape you want to prove that a rhombus is a rhombus the parallel the parallelogram is a parallelogram you need to tell us that this shape that we are looking at is a parallelogram how do you know that the shape that you are looking at is a parallelogram well there are properties of a parallelogram so basically when you are looking at this parallelogram that you have been given what you need to do is be able to identify the properties of a parallelogram out of this shape and if you can do that then you would have proven that this shape is in fact a parallelogram so here now we are looking at the properties of a parallelogram these properties are going are the ones that tell us if the shape that we are looking at is a parallelogram so basically the properties tell us what to look for for us to say that a shape is a parallelogram so basically it's like think of it as it's kind of like you are a doctor and you are diagnosing if a shape is what it claims to be so we are trying to diagnose that what we are looking at is actually a parallelogram. So what are the properties? If you were a doctor, you would say, what are the symptoms to say that this person has flu? So in this case, what are the properties to say that this shape is a parallelogram? So the first one that you are looking at is the opposite sides are parallel. So meaning that the opposite sides that make a breadth and the opposite sides that make the length of that shape are going to be parallel. Parallel means that they are shooting straight forward to opposite end and there will never be an instance where they meet no matter how much you extend them. So if you take a ruler and you start extending those lines, you extend those lines, there is never going to be a point where they meet. So for example, a shape like a triangle there is going to be a point where even if it has, it's an incomplete triangle, but if you take a ruler and you extend those lines, they are going to get to a point where they meet and they make a corner or a vertex as we call it in mathematics. But with a parallelogram, there's never going to be that point. No matter how much you extend those lines, they're just con going to continue going straight forward into the uh, forward direction without ever meeting that's how you know that those lines are parallel then the second point is that the opposite angles are congruent and while we are looking at the second point we must also look at the third point it says the opposite sides are also congruent now how do you know that something is congruent congruent basically is a property of a triangle of two triangles when you're looking at two triangles so you know that a parallelogram is a parallelogram when if you take a ruler and you draw a line in the middle of the parallelogram you would have seen that in the parallelogram that we have been given there was a line in the middle of it that line basically it divides our parallelogram into two triangles those two triangles if there are triangles that has all of their three sides are equal, that's what we call the opposite sides being equal. And if the angles of those two triangles are also equal, then we are saying that it's the opposite angles are also congruent. So basically, you know that a shape is a parallelogram if you can be able to divide it, number one, into two triangles. Then when you're looking at those two triangles, can are the sides of those two triangles equal and are the angles of those two triangles equal if they are then those two triangles are congruent and because those two triangles are coming from one shape that shape can be safely called a parallelogram
property number four diagonals bisect each other so basically that line that just gave us the two triangles when we are now just looking at it as it's just a line that's moving from one corner to the other corner that line is what we call a diagonal line but mo it moving from one corner to the other corner it's basically piercing through an angle and it's bisecting an angle so if that line is moving from one corner to the other and by doing so it's cutting in between an angle that's what we mean by it bisects each other and then the last one consecutive angles are supplementary so here we are talking about those corners where our angles would be those corners where our angles would be where the diagonal line is piercing through so basically where the bisect diagonal line is piercing through or bisecting them as it is used in the correct term when it bisects them it divides the angle into two pieces but those two pieces we are calling them consecutive angles and they are going to supplement each other what do we mean by that so for example you know that in a right angle triangle for example at the corner you have a 90 degree angle if you bisect that angle it means that because it's going to be directly in the min middle it means that the piece on this other side is going to be 45 degrees and the piece on the other side is also going to be 45 degrees when they meet together they make a full 90 and that's what we mean by they supplement each other they are going to make a full 90 when you add them together at the bottom there you have theorems theorems basically they reiterate the points that i've been making with the properties you will see that it's basically the, a further explanation of the properties so now that we have that in lock let's go back to our shape and see if we can indeed diagnose it as a parallelogram so we start looking for our parallel sides so with our parallel sides we're looking for alternative sides they are alternative because they are on two different triangles or you can simply call them opposite sides so in this one i call them alternate sides that's why you see the alt and then that sign with an s it just basically just means alternate side so there's an alternate side of mr and c x that are parallel to each other you will see they are going the same direction and we also have alternate sides of mc and rx that are also parallel so we have dealt with our parallel sides so those ones tell us that in as far as parallel sides are concerned what we have here is a we then get to that part where we divide our parallelogram into two different triangles so the first triangle is going to be the mcr triangle and the other triangle is the xcr triangle and basically here we are trying to prove that they are congruent hence you see that sign there with the three dashes so basically that says that they are congruent how do we know they're congruent remember the angles have to be equal so we have angle r1 and angle c2 that are equal because they are the angles on the same part of the different triangles and we also have angle c1 and angle r2 that are similar on two different triangles and those two angles are equal then we are also going to say the sides of our different triangles are sim are also a equal so we have side mr remember is going to be equal to side cx on the other triangle and then we have mc on the other triangle that's going to be similar to rx on the other triangle and the line in the middle cr and rc are also equal so this is a parallelogram moving on to a different part of our question paper we are calculating angles in a parallelogram 4.2 says in the diagram below a b c d is a parallelogram so in this case we don't have to prove that it's a parallelogram they already told us that it is with angle a equals to 5x plus 5 degrees and angle c at 8x minus 16 degrees 4.2.1 says calculate the value of x now we know that when it comes to a parallelogram opposite angles are equal so that means a and c are supposed to be equal so how you are going to find the value of x is basically you are going to equate the two angles and then you are going to solve for x it is literally that simple so you're going to say 
angle A is equal to angle C. That means 5x plus 5 is equal to 8x minus 16 degrees and when you do it that way and you resolve it meaning you will take the numbers to one side and take the letters to the other that will should give you the value of x so look at what we did i started with the c's why because the c's are just a bigger value but even if you did it the other way it will still work out so c it says 8x minus 16 degrees is equals to 5 x plus 5 degrees so i now took the x's to be on this side and the values to the other side so 8x minus 5x is equals to 5 plus 16 the 16 changes into a plus now because it's going to the other side just the same way the 5x changed into a minus when it's going to the other side of the equals to then i start doing my solving basically my basic math 8 minus 5 is equals to 3x. 5 plus 16 is equals to 21. But since I'm solving for x, I need to remain with x. So I'm going to divide with the value that is next to my x. The value that is next to my x is a 3. So I divide it by 3 and I do it to the other side as well. So the 3s cancel each other. On this side, I'm left with an x. And on the other side, 21 divided by 3 is going to give me 7 degrees. And just as simple as that, I have solved the value of x. So the key here is you being able to know that A and C are supposed to be equal. And when you know the properties of a parallelogram, you will already know that. And that will make your work simpler. Because if you didn't know that, you wouldn't know that this is a part where you need to equate. 4.2.2 says determine the size of angle B. Now with angle B, similarly, B and D are going to be equal. So basically, if you find the value of B, you have found the value of D. Now what we have is we, ha we were able to find the value of X. And since we know that A and C are supposed to be equal as well as D and B are supposed to be equal, that's the first statement that I started with. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to figure out what is the value of A and C. So the value of A and C, I can substitute in either one of those equations. I can substitute into the equation of A or into the equation of C. Either way, they should give me the same result because remember, they are supposed to be equal. So I chose to use the equation of A and where there was X, I substituted the 7 that I found in 4.2.1. So after substituting it, it gives me that A is equal to 40 degrees, which means C is also equal to 40 degrees. Now. We are dealing with a parallelogram. It's a quadrilateral. So that means that all the angles, when they're added together, they're supposed to give me 360 degrees. So angle A plus angle B plus angle C and angle D are supposed to give me 360 degrees. I already know my A and C. A, I have substituted 40 degrees as well as C, I have substituted 40 degrees. And B and D, I have left them as they are. And everything together is supposed to give me 360 degrees. Now, I'm adding my numbers together. A and C are going to give me that 80 degree that you were getting there. That's 40 plus 40. And then for B and D, I just simply call them 2B. Why? Because they're supposed to be equal anyway. If they were not going to be equal, then I can't just simply call them letter B for both of them. But since these ones are going to be equal, I can safely call them letter B. So whatever amount I remain with after accounting for A and C, that amount when I divide it right in the middle by 2 is going to give me the value of D and B. And it's going to be an equal amount because those angles, remember, they're supposed to be equal so what i'm going to do now that i have my 80 degrees plus 2b all of that is still equals to 360 degrees so i'm going to take now my 80 to the side of the 360 so that my numbers can be together when i take my 80 to the other side it becomes a minus 80 degrees so now i'm left with 2b is equals to 360 degrees minus 80 degrees so 2b is equals to 180 I mean 280 degrees sorry so now that I have 2b that is equals to 280 degrees what's left for me is 
to simply divide both sides by 2. Why? Because on that side of B, I want to remain with just angle B. And since it's 2B, I need to get rid of that 2 that comes before the B. So what do I do? I divide by 2 because the 2s are going to cancel each other. And since I did it on this side, I now have to go do it on the other side of the 280. So I minus... I mean, I divide by 2 on one side and I'm left with B. And when I take 280 in your calculator and you divide it by 2, it's going to give you 140 degrees. That 140 degrees is angle B. Similarly, angle D, if the question was also looking for angle D, angle D is the exact same amount. It's going to be 140 degrees because they remember they are supposed to be the exact same amount so that completes your question on quadrilaterals specifically parallelogram if you have any questions leave them for me in the comment section below now if you need one-on-one -on -one help with anything that we have covered in this video or this subject in general we have a visual program that can help you with just that from anywhere in the country all you need is an email and a whatsapp and we are able to give you personalized help for a monthly fee this will cover full lesson recordings as well as notes and study materials for any of your subjects that you need personal help with. This will include some of the subjects that are not even covered on this channel. For example, ch subjects like history. You will soon see our full subject list. We will also cover scopes for those specific subjects as well as attempt past papers together. But what's most important about this virtual sessions is that you get full-time communication meaning from the hours of 8 o'clock to 4 p.m. you are able to send in your questions even if you send them at late between the hours of 8 and 4 you will get replies to your questions you will get to go back and forth and get full-time attention on any question that you do have even if we have to repeat something over and over again you get to have that personalized help that is helpful to you as you can see with some of the examples there we get to exchange scripts we get to exchange question papers and you get to show me what it is that you wrote and you even get markings for your questions to see how you actually do perform when it comes to a specific question or a specific subject grade 10 to grade 12 as well as those who are upgrading and rewriting those are the full list of subjects that we do offer if you are interested in any of this for you to be able to get your price quotation it is very simple all you have to do is email me on that email address that you see there when you do email make sure that in the subject line you write your name and say name and then in the body of your email that's where you will tell me your grade and the subjects that you need help with it can be one subject Subject, or it can be a mixture of subject hands we are saying that you need to email for you to be able to get your price quotation now because this is one-on-one -on -one, it means that it puts a limit on the number of people I can take per month so I'm going to be limiting it to 10 students per month so make sure that you email to secure your spot have youtube recommend you more of my videos be sure to click the like button and subscribe to the channel and if you have any questions leave them in the comment section below